All right, so for section 7.3, this is gonna be on trigonometric equations. So we have four objectives, one being solve equations involving a single trigonometric function, two solve trigonometric functions, or sorry, <laughs> solve tri or trigonometric equations using a calculator, solve trigonometric equations uh, quadratic in form, solve trigonometric equations using fundamental identities. These are four objectives that we're going to be going over today. So as a precursor to any of our objectives in this section, we'll be going over trigonometric equations or just equations that involve trigonometric functions. The values that satisfy the equation are called solutions of the equation. So in this section, we're gonna see many problems end up having multiple solutions um, just because of the way that the questions are going to be formatted. So objective one, we want to solve equations involving a single trigonometric function. So example one, we want to determine whether theta equal to pi over four is a solution to the equation two sine of theta minus one. Then is pi equal, sorry, is theta equals pi over six a solution? So we're checking to see if two things are going to be a solution of our given equation. So Let's go ahead and start with theta equals pi over four. So to see if it's a solution, we're going to plug this in to our uh, function here and check and see if it equals zero. If it equals zero, then it's a solution. If it doesn't, it's not a solution. So if we have theta equal to pi over four, then when we plug this in, we'll see two sine of pi over four minus one. So first we have to find sine of pi over four, which if we use our unit circle um, or just using the values that we know of, we know that sine of pi over four is going to be square root of two over two. So when we multiply two and square root of two over two, this is going to end up just leaving us with the square root of two minus one, which square root of two minus one does not equal zero. So this means that pi over four is not a solution. So now let's go ahead and try pi over six. So you see theta equal to pi over six. So we have two sine of pi over six minus one. So sine of pi over six using our unit circle, we can see it will end up being two times one half. Two times one half is going to be one minus one is equal to zero. So this means that pi over six is a solution. So we know that pi over six is one of our solutions. That doesn't mean that it is the one and only solution. There can be more solutions than just pi over six, but we know that pi over six is at least one. So this example has other solutions other than pi over six. Other solutions would also include five pi over six or 13 pi over six. And this is because of the periodicity of the sine function. So since we see our sine function uh, continue to have um, these constant periods, it is a constantly oscillating function. This means that we're going to find many solutions that would end up working for that specific equation. So it actually is going to have infinitely many solutions since the sine function goes in both the positive and the negative direction infinitely. So if we look at our graph here, this is our graph of y is equal to two sine theta minus one. So we see that when our graph crosses the x-axis, this gives us a value of zero. This means that these are all solutions. So in this case, we're looking at negative seven pi over six, pi over six, five pi over six, and 13 pi over six. So, and these are just a few of our different solutions. 
So we can express our answer before instead of pi over six, which we know is an answer, but we can express the equation for all answers by theta is equal to pi over six plus two pi k, or theta is equal to five pi over six plus two pi k, where k is an integer. These are the two different types since we see that if we just focus on the unit circle itself, there are two separate values on the unit circle that would make that um, solution to that equation. So we would have to consider both of those different angles plus two pi k in each case. So it's going to be um, both of these values or both of these expressions. If we use this, this can give us eight different solutions if we picked strategic values of k. The values of k that we're most often going to use are going to be negative one, zero, one, and two. So if we used k is equal to negative one, this would give us negative five pi over six and negative pi over six. k equals zero would give us pi over six and five pi over six. k equals one would give us 13 pi over six and 17 pi over six. And k equals two would give us 25 pi over six and 29 pi over six. So most of the work we'll do is only interested in finding solutions of trig equations for theta being between zero and two pi. So really any values over two pi, we're not going to um, pay all that much attention to if we're actually listing solutions. But we always want to give um, these general expressions. So for example two, we want to solve the equation cosine of two pi is equal to one half for theta between zero and two pi. So we're seeing this theta between zero and two pi once again here. But we want to solve this equation. And this is actually uh, going to be on the interval. zero to two pi, but not actually including two pi. We don't actually include two pi just because this would actually give us the same value as if we had zero. So we just choose to not include two pi. We could choose to not include zero um, and include two pi instead, but this is just the way that we most often write this out. So this equation is going to be on the interval zero to two pi, not including two pi. So, Then cosine of theta, we're gonna ignore the two theta. We're just gonna assume cosine of theta. We know that cosine of theta is going to equal one half and pi over three and five pi over three. So we know that this is when cosine of theta is equal to one half, but we need to know cosine of two theta equaling one half. So we can think about on the interval zero to two pi, cosine of two theta would end up making two cycles or it would have two periods and it would now have four solutions instead of just two. So we're going to use two theta instead of theta in our general solutions, general solution formula to find are four solutions. So now what we're considering is that we have two theta is equal to pi over three plus two pi k, or two theta is equal to five pi over three plus two pi k. So these are general formulas that we're considering but we had to consider them with two pi, but we still wanna solve for just theta. 
So we divide everything by two. So we divide everything by two, this ends up giving us theta is equal to pi over six plus pi k, or theta is equal to five pi over six plus pi k. And this gives us our general kind of formula. So let's put that in blue. So then our final answer, but it does give us a formula. So now that we have these values, we want the uh, solutions that are gonna be found in the unit circle. These are most likely are going to be when k is equal to zero and when k is equal to one. So when k is equal to zero, we end up, let's write out our solution set here. When k is equal to zero, we end up getting pi over six and five pi over six. Then if k is one, we would end up getting six pi over six plus pi over six, which would then give us seven pi over six. And for our second part, if we had six pi over six plus five pi over six, this would give us 11 pi over six. So what we see here was that this was when k equals zero and this is when k equals one. And these are all the values that would be solutions found in the unit circle. And that there would be our solution set. So moving on, objective two, we wanna solve trigonometric equations using a calculator. So we're gonna go ahead and use a calculator for this example, but we can go ahead and write some stuff out before we go head over to Desmos. So for example three, we wanna solve tangent of theta is equal to negative two for theta being between zero and two pi. We wanna express our answer in radians and we're gonna to round to two decimal places. So let's start with some stuff that we're going to end up writing out. So if we have tangent of theta is equal to negative two, we wanna find the value of theta. So we can end up taking the inverse tangent of both sides. If we do that, this gives us theta is equal to tangent inverse of negative two. So this is the first place that we will end up need, needing to use a calculator. So let's pop on over to Desmos. So using Desmos, we wanna find inverse tangent of negative two. So we're gonna go over here to function. We're gonna put in tangent inverse, and then we're going to put in negative two. Our calculator is already in radians since we had it before. And we're rounding to two decimal places. So if our value is negative 1.10714871818, this means that we want to round to this place. So this is going to give us a value of about negative 1.11. So let's go back over to our notes. So writing this in our notes, we get that theta is equal to tangent inverse of negative two, which is about negative 1.11, and this is in radians, so we can write red. So these are in radians. According to the definition of inverse tangent, theta has to be in between negative pi over two and pi over two, not zero and two pi, since we've now kind of transferred over here to tangent inverse. So let's go ahead and write that out. So, find the definition of tangent inverse theta is between negative pi over two and pi over two. Not zero and two pi. So 
so our answer is more so relating to um, our original domain, which was between zero and two pi. So we need to kind of transfer our answer to be in more of the form of tangent inverse. So what's going to happen here is that we have to subtract this value from pi and two pi. So we'll go ahead and write that out. So since it's the period of tangent or tangent inverse is pi, this means that pi minus 1.11 and two pi minus 1.11 are going to be the solutions. These are the solutions that lie in our interval zero to two pi. Since we know that um, negative 1.11 isn't actually going to lie in our interval from zero to two pi. So we have to find these values are now going to lie in our interval. So we can go ahead and find what those values are. So I'm gonna say then pi minus, or sorry, theta is equal to pi minus 1.11 and theta is equal to two pi minus 1.11. So let's go ahead and pop over to Desmos again really fast to find those values. All right, so in Desmos, we want to find pi minus 1.11 and 2 pi minus 1.11. So when we put this in, we can either input pi with this button here. We say pi minus 1.11. That gives us one of our values. If we press enter, it just moves that solution upwards. So now we can enter in another value. So now we're gonna have two pi minus uh, 1.11. And that gives us our next value. And both of these answers are going to lie in between zero and two pi. So let's go ahead and write these answers down in our notes. All right, so pi minus 1.11, we found was going to be about 2.03, and two pi minus 1.11 is going to be about 5.17. So these here are our solutions. If we wanna write these in our solution set, we would say our solution set is then equal to 2.03 and 5.17. And these are our solutions there. So all right, that wraps up how we would go ahead and use a calculator to solve these.